Hey gang, welcome to your seventh CSS grid tutorial and in this video we're going to take everything we've learnt so far to make a 12 column grid. Alright then, so I thought I'd just take one video to show you how to create a 12 column grid system using CSS grid, much like you'd find in Bootstrap 12 column grid system, this time this is going to be pure CSS using CSS grid. So. The first thing you're going to notice is this div right here with an ID of content. This is still serving as our grid wrapper. Then we have six different elements inside, a header, main, section, a side, nav and footer. So these are going to be distributed on this 12 column grid system later on. Now up here in the styles we have some very basic styles. First of all we're setting a font colour of white, the font family and we're setting everything to text align centre. Then the content, this div right here, we're setting display grid, so that's our grid wrapper now. We also have a max width of 960 pixels and a margin of zero top and bottom, auto left and right. This is going to centralize this 960 pixel element on the page, if you can see that right there. All right, cool. So everything as well, which is a direct descendant of this content ID, is going to have a background of this blue color and a padding of 30 pixels. So that's each one of these elements right here. All right. Cool. So it looks something like this in the browser at the minute where each element stacks one on top of the other. Now we want to create 12 columns on this grid. So the first thing we need to do is come to our grid wrapper, which is this content div right here. And we need to define our columns using grid hyphen template hyphen columns, right? Now I'm not going to write this out 12 times. I'm going to use the repeat function to say, and by the way, spell this correctly, repeat we want to repeat something 12 times and each column is going to be one fraction of the whole grid. So every column is going to be the same width, right? So if we save that, we can see they're all left to right now, but still we need to kind of distribute these later on. The first thing I want to do though is set the row height or rather the minimum height of the row. So I'm going to use a property called grid hyphen auto hyphen rows to do that. And remember, we can use min max to say the minimum height of a row is going to be 100 pixels and then the maximum height of the row is going to be auto, so determined by the content within it. So if I save this now, you can see the row takes on the height of 100 pixels at the minute. All right, cool. Now I want to set a grid gap. So I'll say grid hyphen gap is going to be 10 pixels, just so that between each column and each row, we're going to get this little 10 pixel gap as well. Awesome. Now, what I would like to do is position these different things right here inside these 12 columns. So let's do these one at a time. Let's start with the header. I'm going to come underneath this rule right here and say header. And then inside, I'm going to use grid hyphen column. Remember, we can use this to distribute our elements into a certain column, if you like. So we say the start point and the end point. Now we've created 12 columns right here. And remember, when we talked about column lines, there's always one more column line than there is uh, columns, if you like, right? So the starting point is going to be at the first column line at the very start and then the end point is going to be at 13 which is after the 12th column. So save that now and we can see the header goes full width across the top. That's what we want. We want it to span all 12 columns. Cool. So now the next one. The next tag is main. So let's come underneath and say main and then I would like this to start maybe at line 4. So 1, 2, 3, round about here, line 4, yeah? and go all the way to the end. So we'll say grid hyphen column is going to be from line four and it's going to go up to the end, which is 13. So let's save that and see what it looks like. Okay, so it's going from line four now over here all the way to line 13. So it's taking up this right portion of the, uh, the wrapper. So I also want it to take up more height than it is currently doing. It's just taking up one row in height at the minute. It's starting at line two. Remember, line one is at the top, line two is here, and it's finishing at line three. I want to take this down to line four, round about here. Okay, so we'll use grid hyphen row to do this one, and we'll say it starts at number two, where it currently is, and it's going to go all the way to line four. So that doubles it in height now, and our main content is going to go here. All right, what's next? Let's do the aside. So underneath this, we'll say aside, and inside that, we'll say grid hyphen column and I want this to go from the very start over here yeah all the way up to here which is line four remember one two three four so it's going to take up this space right here so we'll say grid hyphen column is going to go from one to four save that 
and view it and we can see it's right here like so okay now this section is currently above it right here but if you take a look down here that's because section comes first now I said that we can place elements wherever we want on the grid without worrying about the order of them in here and in actual fact I don't want this section to go right here we're going to move it so we'll say section and inside here I'm going to say grid hyphen column first of all and I'm going to say I want this to go from 1 all the way to 13 so it's going to be full width right so 1 is all the way on the left and then 13 all the way on the right so it's going to be full width now I want to set the row so I want it to go underneath the main content and go full width all the way across here. Now, row column, uh, rather row line one is at the top, two is here, three is here, and four is here. So I want it to start at row line four, and I want it to end not at five, but at six down here. So let us say grid hyphen row is gonna start at four, and it's gonna go all the way to six. So save that, and we can see now the section is down here, and the aside has moved back up. Awesome. So now let's do nav. We'll say nav right there. And I'm just going to define grid hyphen column on this one because I don't need to change its current row position, which is right here. I just want to take it from this line over here to line four, which is right here. So we'll say grid hyphen column is going to go to one, uh, from one to four. Save that and view it in a browser. And we can see that's in the correct place now. Awesome. So now we have the footer right at the bottom, which is the last tag. And we want this to kind of go full width as well. So we'll say footer is going to go from grid hyphen column one all the way, oops, one all the way to 13. Save that and it spans full width now. Awesome. So now we've distributed these different elements on a 12 column grid. But I want to show you one more trick now which is going to enable you to visualize your 12 column grid system with all the different columns and column lines on top of this kind of overlay, right? So what I'm going to do to do this is come inside this div right here inside the grid itself. And I'm going to create a div inside it with an ID equal to grid, right? So this is going to be our grid overlay. And inside here, what I'm going to do is just create a series of P tags. And there's going to be 12 P tags in total. Now, I'm not going to write them all out. I'm just going to paste them in so I don't have to bore you. And each of these P tags is going to represent a column on the grid, if you like. And we're going to style these in such a way that they'll represent a column on top of this. So you'll be able to see all of the columns. So to do that, let's come up here. And the first thing I'd like to do is set the position of this wrapper right here content to relative because we're going to position this dude down here as absolute and we're going to position it to the top left corner of this grid right here okay so it starts in the top left so let's give this a position first of all of relative then what i'd like to do is create a rule for this grid right here so underneath i'll say grid and inside that we want to display this as grid and the reason we want to display this as grid is because we want to split it up into 12 columns and each one of these is going to be distributed onto one of those columns right Does that make sense cool so after we've done that we want to position this grid absolutely so we'll say absolute for the position and it's going to be at the top zero and left zero so it's going to start in the top left of this wrapper right here okay now I want to define our columns now I'll say grid hyphen template hyphen columns and there's gonna be 12 in total because it's a 12 column grid system we're working with here so we'll say repeat 12 times 1 fr so it's exactly the same as the actual grid we created for this so 12 columns all the same width one fraction now let's do grid hyphen auto hyphen rows and this is going to be min max and the minimum is going to be 100 percent in height right and auto for max now this means that it's going to take up 100 percent height of its parent element which is this thing right here so that means that every element which kind of represents a column on the grid is going to be seen in full height 
overlaying this thing right here. It's going to be full height of the actual grid that it's within this thing. Make sense? Cool. So once we've done that, we want to say the width of this overall element, this grid right here, is going to be 100% so that it spans the entire width of the actual grid it's in, our content. Okay. And then I'm going to say height is going to be 100% as well. Then I'm going to set the background to be transparent. How do we spell this? I always struggle. That's right. Okay. And that's because up here we said that every element directly a descendant of grid has a background of blue. Now I don't want that for this grid thing right here. So I'm overriding it by saying it has a background of transparent. Yeah. It's also going to have a padding of zero. We'll strip out any of that. And we won't put in display none yet, but we will do later. So if I save this at the minute, a view over here, you're not going to see much. Even if we refresh, there's nothing much going on yet. And that's because nothing is kind of styling these P tags. Yeah, we've created this grid and all of the columns, but we need to style these P tags so we can actually see them. So if I say now grid P and then underneath this, we're going to give each one of these P tags a border of one pixel and solid. Then we're going to give each one a background of 0, 0, 0, which is black. Then a margin of 0 to strip out the default margin. And we're going to get, and we're going to set the opacity to these p tags to be 0 0.2 because we don't just want to see black columns. We want them to be semi transparent so we can see through them where the content is. So if we save this now, you can see this grid system overlaying the content. So we can see how many columns different elements take up and where they are on the page so if you have your design to the right in photoshop or whatever you can kind of match it up and you can use these columns right here to overlay the content to make sure that everything is the same if you like and it's just a good kind of visualization of your grid now i know all of the time when you're creating your design you don't always want this thing here so you want something to maybe toggle it on and off which is what i'm going to show you how to do now dead quickly so to toggle it I'm going to create some kind of checkbox. I'm going to put the checkbox just above the content. It doesn't need to be inside the grid. So I'll say input type is going to be equal to checkbox. So the idea is that when this is checked, then we will show the grid. When it's not checked, we won't show the grid, right? So by default, we don't show the grid. So this grid right here, we want to set display to none. So it doesn't show by default. And the idea is when this is checked, we want to show it. When we uncheck it, we don't show it. Okay. So we can use a CSS trick to do that. I'm going to come down here and I'm going to say input, which is this thing right here. And then a pseudo selector checked. So this detects when that input box is checked. Then I'm going to use a sibling selector to say the next sibling. And that's going to be content. So when this is checked, Grab the content div, which is right here. Then I want you to grab the grid within it and display it as block. Make sense? So by default, it doesn't display. But when this is checked, well, this will be true. Input checked. Then we grab the content. Then we grab the grid inside it and we display it as block when it's checked. So save that. Check it out in a browser. And we check it and it shows. But something's not quite right. And stupidly. That's because I've displayed it as block and not grid. We don't want it to display it as block. We need it as a grid wrapper. So save that and check it out now. Okay, cool. So now when we check it, we can see the grid overlaying the content. And when we uncheck it, we don't see it. Awesome. So that, my friend, is how to create a 12 column grid system. In the next video, I'm going to show you how to create a mosaic layout using CSS grid.